finger pointing, no blaming. You know, we don't say this person did that. It's a more positive, constructive approach. We listen to everybody, which I don't think is a problem with this group. And no ideas are bad ideas. And this is really fascinating because I've been in brainstorms where people have said really crazy things. You know, like, oh, we should put a guy on the moon. Like, well, great, but we're a private company. How do we put a, you know, we're Hudson. How do we do that? But, but you'd, be, you'd be surprised how the big, crazy idea sparks other ideas and eventually could lead to something really, I hate the term out of the box, but. So, so anyway, the brainstorm rules are just that, that it's constructive. And I'm just going to leave them here so we remember. So why don't we kick off the brainstorm and talk? What is a brand? There's a visual element, a word content, and a perception element. But I want you guys to start talking. Like, What do you think of when you hear the word brand? We talked a little bit. Just in general. Yeah. Sometimes it's a logo, you know, like, like the Nike swoosh kind of thing. I'm going to get a better pen. Other thoughts? It makes a sense of identity. cloud of thoughts that you have of something around, you know, for instance, like Nike, we have the swoosh, but then we have this whole, they support Colin Kaepernick, they are all about, you know, women being powerful, they, you know, all, all that that calls to mind. Right, and, and that works with the concept of personal branding. You know how people brand themselves, and so, you know, some things you do is consistent with your brand, and some things aren't. Right. Which is a strange idea of personal brand, but it's very popular. You hear it now with social media. Right. Because if you do something, if, if you're posting cat pictures every single day, That's and then all brand. of a sudden you post something really shocking, like a, an accident, you're off brand. Right. right. <laughs> So it is a sense of identity. Carol said something earlier that I agree with, which is if you don't brand, then you're seceding. You're, you're allowing somebody else to brand you. And so it is important that we take control of our brand. But the question is how? Hmm. You know, it's funny. All these years I've been thinking that, that there had been a very subtle kind of tourism board working in Hudson because it's been working so effectively in that the New York Times routinely right. has just these amazing glowing articles. It's like somebody's planting stories. So I think, I think it's like, don't tamper with it. It feels right. like it's working just mm -hmm. fine. And you get into this silly tampering and it ruins the kind of, the yeah. so-called, the cool yeah. quality of, <laughs> of the town. Yeah, I agree with you. Right? My wife and I were talking about that last night, about how, you know, if you branded Hudson, you know, it kind of takes away. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know. That's what's because so they're cool. so bottoms up. The, yeah. Yeah, the challenge you know. is to sort of keep the, you know, the level of interest where it is now. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, to me, all of these things about how do we tr attract people to Hudson are irrelevant. They're here, they're coming. Yeah. How do we keep yeah. them coming? Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, that's the, I mean, that's the challenge. That's why they're here. Is because of the, you know, not the not the identity or the, you know, yeah. whatever. But that, but you know, what you were talking about, uh, the what what seemed like a strategic placement of is was completely serendipitous. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. someone at Bar did a study, mm -hmm. um, you know, that just showed how you know, how the New York Times and New York Magazine had actually created Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> I think a brand I mean, is those also, are my words. Yes, yes, but that, that's funny that somebody actually looked into that, actually. That. I think a brand is also a look. When I think of Hudson, I think of, like, take, take Vince Mulford's window during winter walk, you know, and I just think of this look that was very common because very good designers and dealers, you know, people with a real aesthetic came to Hudson and created all these shops. And there's a very uh, strong sense of what the Hudson look is. And now it's being kind of, you know, Instagrammed. But this whole look 
occurred before Instagram and has nothing to do with a brand in the Madison Avenue sense, but has to do with a look. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more about, you know, the iconic locations here, you know, Olana, you know, the waterfront. The Catskills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, cat farms. Yeah, absolutely, you know. And the, the, the uh, you know, the classic paintings of the waterfront back in the, you know, mm -hmm. 1700s. Diamond Street doesn't hurt mm -hmm. that it was, yeah. had difficulties years ago Come also. Time and time again, yeah. people, yeah. so the history. Well, it's interesting. History, yeah, good point. Yeah. History. But now we're talking about Hudson, not the concept of brand. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, all, it's all an experience. Like everything kind of adds up to one part right. of the experience. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's interesting too, and this is a little off topic of branding, but the idea of a Nashville firm, I, I just don't think of the people of Nashville as being the people who come to Hudson. <laughs> you know, like, so sure, they can come here and spend three days, but are they even the group of people who would? Ever visit Hudson? When you read their proposal, it's really about applying a formula that they're very proud of having developed and using that model and then inputting the Hudson information. That sounds scary, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, really, and I, it's not encouraging. I went yeah. to college in Saratoga, and I remember Saratoga being very, you know, the Main Street had just singular shops. Mm. They didn't have a gap. They didn't have a, and, now, and now it's changed. Oh, yeah. um, and I, I do think there's a threat of Hudson getting a whole bunch of people coming here and then developers. And, and I mean, I think we have a lot of things that prevent that. We've just got yep. that one. Right, story. but I do, it's no also it's a fragile um, ecosystem. Uh, exactly. And when I think of what's unique about Hudson, it's that we're in this absolutely beautiful location. There's this tiny little isolated city that happens to be on the Amtrak. And a ton of artists and creative people live here. So we've kind of identified everything in a brand. We're getting drilling down to Hudson, which we're going to do a little bit later too. But you know, sense of identity, the resources, location. That's that's specific to a destination, if you will. I know that is a bad word. The logo is certainly a big part of it. Um, press coverage, which gets to like public perception a little bit. That's expanding with social. Um, so these are the concepts behind a brand. We talked a little bit earlier about the old school approach, which really is kind of, you have to understand that we were dependent on magazines to get the word out. We didn't have social media and it was very hard. We didn't have emails from thousands of people. We couldn't do direct. So you would develop a logo, you would push it out, you'd find those three words that everybody outside of the destination wanted to hear that excited them and you'd push them there. And, and you put the splashy ad campaign, sit back and wait. Um, and, and I think that that's just antiquated today. I think now we have an opportunity, again, to create ambassadors out of the people of Hudson mm -hmm. by creating a brand from within. And if you think of the biggest trend in business, I think the biggest trend in business for the past, I'm going to say 20 years, has been customer centricity. Where companies, we're not a company, I get it, Hudson's not. But this customer centricity kind of goes back to, well, wait a minute, why are we making it so hard for customers when we rely so heavily on them? I think that for Hudson branding, we could do a Hudson centricity. And, and I've heard this, I don't know if you said it, somebody, somebody maybe you said it, Woody, but in, in some meeting I was in, somebody said, happy people make a happy destination. That's what, that's what Rich, Rich Volo, Volo said. said. Rich Volo yeah. said, yeah. okay. And, and I know that I'm, I'm, I've got a different view on him on that particular presentation, but I feel that the happy, I feel, personally I feel the pre presentation that I saw was very much of this. And I feel that happy city makes happy people is down here, where we get people who, when they take trips to the city, they tell people proudly that they're from Hudson, you should come up and visit. Yeah. Any thoughts on this? In response to this whole conversation posted, I can't remember who it was, the idea that 
People have long been kind of wandering around Hudson, finding hidden gems, and that's part of the charm of Hudson, and a really in-your-face campaign of signage and pointing out exactly where to go might disrupt that. Might be antithetical. Quality. <coughs> you know, what's always interesting to me is how many people want to claim there in Hudson who aren't. Yes. You know, I mean, granted, we do have a, we share a zip code, but uh, I've met so many people coming to live in Hudson, I'll ask them your address, and it's not in Hudson. Right. And they actually think, some of them actually think, even until they try to go vote or something like that. You know, somebody got a house out in Glendale, which is south, I guess, the Livingston or Greenport, and they were totally convinced they were Hudson residents. So that says something about the desirability of Hudson, just the name Hudson. Yeah. You're right about that. You're right about that. Yeah. Well, that's definitely the, the Falls markets itself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Hudson Valley. People also say Hudson Valley. Which is a great segue to kind of the next piece, which is who are our target audiences? I mean, at some point you have to say to yourself, we're, we're going to brand, but, but who are we branding to? And I think a lot of people think that we're going to the city dwellers, people looking for an escape. New York City. I haven't heard a lot of talk of Boston. They've already found us for decades. They've been coming. You'd be surprised how few people have heard of Hudson in New York City. Really? Oh yeah. Although I have to say, I was at, uh, I was down in the city, and I was in a cafe, and I had just bought the place here. I'm from Columbia County, but I had just moved back, and here I am sitting in this cafe, and this guy next to me is talking. He's so enthusiastic. He's talking with his friend, and finally he says. You just have to come. It's the cutest little place ever. It's called Hudson. <laughs> I'm like, I can't get away from Hudson. Obviously, I made the right choice. You haven't mentioned Brooklyn, which is a huge factor. You, you know about the Brooklyn bus. They're going to come here Labor Day weekend. It was incredible. I mean, somebody has come up with the cash to create a bus tour of Hudson. You're right about that. Yeah. And, and there's no question that it has been Brooklynized to some extent. Well, like yeah, I mean, you know, so many of the new residents are from Brooklyn, you know? I mean, it's crazy. And, and the comparisons often made, Brooklyn has. Yeah, and I mean, it, it has a little bit of the feel of Brooklyn, parts of Brooklyn anyway. You know, and I mean, I, I just think that, uh, you know, I think it is, it, it is all about the location and the you know, what's happened with the, the uh, renovation of the buildings here, especially on, well, everywhere, you know. We've been coming up here, my wife and I, for 20 years now. And, you know, we just kept thinking, we were in Ulster County, we were in the city forever, and then in Ulster County. And then every time we would come up, we would think, my gosh, you know, this place is just, you know, something new is happening every time. You know, and it just got better and better and better. And finally we said, you know, we need to move up there. <laughs> you know? And so we've, we've only been here for like eight months now, but we love it. And we're not going anywhere else, that's for sure. Well, and that could be a segue from the city dwellers to your point, which we do have. I'm not sure we tap into Boston, which is just as quick to get here as New York City. So that could be an opportunity. I still need to stop in the grocery yeah. The Berkshires, yeah, they stop. Yeah. Although, I'm noti have you noticed there's a shift from Great Barrington? When, when I was growing up, yeah. my mom would always say, we need to do grocery shopping, Great Barrington or Hudson? And it was always Great Barrington. Yeah, yeah. Always, always, always. Because we were not coming to Hudson, we were going to Greenport to box stores. Right. Yeah. And I think that's changed now. And now you see Helsinki's yeah, I, I totally here. Agree. and Yeah. yeah. Uh, local tourists, this is something that I haven't heard I have not heard people talk about it yet, but like I, I lived in Park Slope for many years. Nobody flies from Iowa or Paris or or Argentina to come and visit Park Slope Brooklyn. They're, they're coming to see Manhattan and the sites. However, Park Slope really kind of became this huge neighborhood because you had people in neighboring areas. Uh, in Gowanus, before that really popped, uh, Borham Hill. Uh, Carroll Gardens, they were all coming on the weekend because Park Slope was kind of cool. 
So there is an opportunity for us to kind of connect with local tourists. And this is probably already happening. Well, there are local tourists if you, if you make local sort of 40 or 50 miles around here that come to Olana. They come I to know, Olana. because I've been giving tours and I ask them and so many are like from 20, 30 miles away. Okay. There are lots of people from around the county who come to Hudson for any manner of, I mean, they come for events at the Opera House, they come for dinner, they come for right. you know, things going yeah. on at right. Helsinki or... Yeah, I mean, to that point, though, one of the challenges with attracting local tourists is that a lot of that attraction is going to be nightlife. And one of the benefits that you have in nightlife in New York City versus nightlife in upstate New York is that you don't have to drive home when you have nightlife in New York City. Helsinki shuts the doors five minutes after their, their talent goes off the stage because they don't want to be liable for a DUI. Yeah. Um, and that is a real problem up here. The idea was that when Uber came, we were going to have more comprehensive options for transportation late at night to get people home, but that hasn't really been the case. That's a great point. Yeah, I think we're all waiting for self-driving cars. <laughs> There's another... Yeah, type of target audience, which is those people that have weddings here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Hudson as a destination. Definitely. And I think that is a huge industry. You know, it totally is. So it's not like... It is, but having worked in it, I mean, I can tell you that there's a life cycle to every product, and it used to be people who came up from Manhattan, and then it was people who came from Brooklyn, and now it's people from Long Island or down the shore. If there is... We, we've kind of peaked past cool factor. Everybody's just sort of coming up here because this is what you do. And that is the challenge. I think that, yeah, I think I'm that's sorry. really the point, that <laughs> we don't want to pass our life cycle. We want, you know, we need to learn from um, communities that have been tourism destinations for decades, right. you know, how they manage right. it, because all of this, you know, I see all of this talk about tourism is like, let's attract people now. But, you know, since we kind of double in population on the weekend, it's like we're attracting people now. Let's try to figure out how we can continue to have this, you know, so we, we've like overcome the fickleness of, of what's trendy and what's cool and people will continue to come to Hudson because there are things worth coming to Hudson for. So a sustainable brand. Sustainable brand. Something exactly. that doesn't just fizzle out because, I mean, you see one of the biggest problems with wine marketing. You know, you, you find a wine that you like, and then three years later, everyone's laughing at you for drinking, you know, 2016's wine. Well, there's nothing right. different about the wine, still delicious. <laughs> it might be valuable to ask why other places failed. I mean, why did people stop going down to Asbury Park in the 60s, yeah. 70s? Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Why do people start coming, yeah. stop coming up to the Berkshires? Yeah. And then that's hot again. That's or the Catskills. Or the Catskills. Catskills died. Catskills died. Right. died because of changes in, you know, people started going on airplanes and they didn't yeah, just go to the Catskills. Catskills. How about the town of Woodstock? Where do you go? It's, it was very, that was the center of the universe yeah. at a certain yeah. point. Yeah. Now it has an odd kind of pull on, and I'm not sure if it's what we want or <laughs> which, part, which part of the town of Woodstock? I don't, I just need the main drag, I guess, you know, is it, uh, but it's, I don't know, I mean, compared to this, it seems really boring to me. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, it, it does. At really. one point in time, it, it was so a magnet, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's... Rhinebeck's another one. Yeah. Where Rhinebeck is, uh, they have great restaurants, uh -huh. they have nice shops. Personally, I just doesn't, don't feel it has the soul uh -huh. that Hudson has. The complexity, it's sort of... There's no diversity. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it reminds me of, uh, you know, it, it's similar to being in the Hamptons, yeah, Rhinebeck really is, is, you know. It really is. There's a demographic that's like, you know, no, don't, no thanks, you know. That's true. And then another target audience that I think we haven't looked at enough, not us, but I think that the city itself has, is Hudson residents because the branding is going to affect all of us more than anyone else. And so think about like a retail store. My brother, he used to work in retail. He had no interest in fashion whatsoever. The minute he gets a job in retail, 
he's buying all kinds of clothes, he's talking to me about the different styles, and he's really into it. And then I started to notice that people who work for companies tend to get interested and then they tend, tend to buy more. What if we got people in Hudson inspired? It actually might drive people to get more involved in Hudson life, might drive some tourism. And again, there's that ambassador thing that I am personally really into. <laughs> Well, it answers some of the uh, desires of some of the people who are supporting the tourism uh, proposal because they are looking just to sell their products. And if it's Mary Wong who wants to get more people and put some clothes here. Right. Um, the new chat says, want more people to come to TK, whatever it's called. Right, you know, right, right. It's a very simple kind of. Uh, so I used to live in Greenport, Long Island, and I felt like the town was completely run by the vendors, by the merchants there. And so the, the, they had this beautiful park right on the harbor. And it was perfect for the farmer's market. And then all of the merchants got really angry because they felt that people were going to the farmer's market instead of their stores. It was quite the opposite. Because, you know, they had to buy things in the stores that weren't at the market. Um, and the town really became overrun by everything with what the merchants would do. I think Hudson is not there yet, but I agree with you. We have to focus. I don't think we have to ignore that, but there's got to be a way that um, it isn't just driving people into clothing stores. Yeah, but I think we have to acknowledge that one of the main pulls of Hudson is Warren Street. Agreed. And what is Warren Street but a bunch of shops? Mm -hmm. and, and whenever I have visitors from out of town, that is the essential activity is walking down Warren Street. Right. And we need to be careful about that with raising the tax base, etc. That, that the interesting shops don't get priced out of being on Warren Street. Because if we lose those shops, I think we lose a ton of what, what Hudson's about. Mm -hmm. And it's already starting. Yes, it's starting. Too many empty shops. But restaurants, too. Yeah. Okay. The moment Dan Seward gets priced out of Warren Street, it's over. Yeah. I mean, that's my witness test. And yeah. you've been in seven spots since I've been. Right. <laughs> well, there are people who move around. Yeah. Because you mentioned Mary Vaughn, and she had started yeah. White Rice. Right. And his spaces have improved over time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and what would his, what, what, what are his spaces? John Doe Records. Oh, the record shop. Yeah. That's what came to mind, but yeah. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's, yeah, that, that would be a kind of a good thing. And he just got his rent up to In the basement of one of those, how, one of oh, those yeah. buildings just up Arms from the. Barns. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, let's look a little bit at uh, inspiration from other tourism brands. So if we're going to talk about what we can do, why don't we get some inspiration? Like, what are brands that, especially tourism brands, what are brands that make you say, hey, that's pretty interesting, and what are brands that make you say, not so much? Well, this isn't what you're looking at for, but when I first came to Hudson, there was something called the Hudson Art Dealers Association. Remember, it had a... Antique Stores. Antique Stores. Antique Stores. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what I said, but I meant Antique Stores. And um, they had a brochure that I considered to be a model brochure. It had a column, it had a Greek, you know, Roman column, black and white, beautifully produced. Oh, mm -hmm. I was happy of that. <laughs> yeah, and it had a list of all the antique stores in Hudson, it had a map, and I thought it was marvelous marketing. And what's scary about marketing Hudson as a one thing is that something like this brochure is kind of off, it's not really under consideration because it's, um, it's too much detail for something that's um, about the restaurants, it's about the music, it's about the architecture, you know? I, 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 this is so important. We can skip this for a second. This is so important. You're 100% you're right, I think. But at so, the time they, they created that, Hudson pretty much was that one thing. I mean, that's why people came here to, you know, All right. to buy in. So I'll just hold it up as a great marketing thing and, and you can get the brochure from Carol, okay? Or actually, I, I, I might have a copy of it somewhere. But if, but if you look at this, like, what is scary about marketing Hudson is like one thing. It, it, it no longer hits us because we do have the antique dealers. We have a vibrant art scene. There's this open studio that is happening that an, a local artist, um, Jane Ehrlich, Ehrlich, Ehrlich. Has, has organized. 
Um, I'm hearing other people talking about very interactive kind of uh, tours, art tours, or what have you. But if, if we come up with this one, like Hudson is creative, or Hudson is cool, or those three words, it's very limiting. It, it, it's just one thing. Hudson's a little bit of everything. Exactly. And exactly. Yeah. So we could have a more modular brand rather than one brand. We're going to go through this methodology and then we're going to have a logo and a tagline. We could have something that's very modular. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, Hudson is really a kit of parts, you know. And somehow, if you could create an identity that can, you know, sort of move around and incorporate different elements, maybe in the same, you know, or similar styles. Uh, but it would have to be evolving and continually changing, I think. Yeah, I mean, you can't ignore what uh, Vern Cross said at the meeting the other night, that there's a whole bunch of Hudson that hasn't been considered at all. What? Yeah. Ed, Cross. Ed Cross. I mean, what is the value of branding Hudson versus not branding Hudson and simply throwing support to things that happen in Hudson? I don't think I've seen very many municipal marketing plans that didn't turn me off of the city and just make me think, wow, this is kind of this is kind of a silly, I mean, cheesy place to be. Right? Keep Austin weird was probably one that worked. I'm sure I love New York worked. I don't think that we I don't think that we can do that. But when you brand something, you're essentially saying, please come enjoy, we're all here for you. Like it's there's a phoniness that yeah, that but goes with that. Could also just be a look. Like I said that Hada brochure had a great look. Yeah. Okay. And there are some things, I give the example of this Victorian um, furniture store that was on the corner where Sketch was. You know, it had this horrible look. It wasn't like Hudson at all. This Victorian architect, uh, Victorian furniture. It's like it made me puke every time I looked at it, you know, because it wasn't the Hudson look. So a brand could just be a look. It doesn't have to be a word. What do you mean by a look, though? Do you just mean supporting other people's marketing efforts? No, I just mean that you were here when you were talking about it, but there is a Hudson look. There is something that reminds people of Hudson, and there are things that are definitely not Hudson. So uh, this, this is the, the one thing that is, uh, I'm going to give everybody credit, including the people at Chandler Thinks, this is hard. Branding is not easy. It is really, really hard, because you have to get, you have to inspire an entire city and a majority of people to say, yeah, I'm okay with that. Or you have to ram it through. And so this is really hard. That being said, if done correctly, you know, it, there could be this modular look. There could be, you know, things. And if we look within, and if you don't mind, Woody, I'm going to give this guy down here some props. This guy came up with a logo for our Hudson Waterfront, which is a very grassroots new um, advocacy group that's come up now. You can pass it around. And again, I'm, I'm just going to worship a little bit here, but, but Woody, that was Thank you. phenomenal. And he showed us like five options, and we were blown away by all of them. <laughs> and I mean, I think what, what really led us to that symbol is that we talked, at some point we were talking about how, uh, you know, we love our Hudson Waterfront, you know. And so I kept thinking, okay, how can we incorporate love without using the word, you know? And that's when we came up with the W for waterfront with the heart, you know? So I think it works pretty well. So when we're talking, the reason why I mentioned that is from a modular approach, maybe there's, also, there's already like a visual component that we could pull into. In the 70s, Hudson was all about the whale, you know? Yeah. Right. And I was a kid, so, and I loved I freaking loved whales, so I just loved coming to Hudson and see the big wheel and you know the parking. There's still a few signs with the whale yeah, with the wheels. Definitely. I'm not saying go back to the whale, but I but but I think that's an example of a modular approach where it doesn't have to be a logo. It doesn't have to be keep Austin weird, put the bumper stickers everywhere, and we're done. Right. But it could be something that could be very different for an art organization and an antique organization versus the hospitality team. Yeah. It's a thought. I mean, you know, I, I have no idea what we should do, but uh, at this point anyway. But, you know, let's just say you had the word Hudson, you know, 
in really nice typography. And it was in a rectangle or whatever, I don't know. But And the background was always something different. You know, it could be waterfront paintings. It could be, you know, the, uh, the lighthouse, the, you know, Moana, whatever, you know. You're talking about a website? No, no, I'm talking about for just an, an identity that is, you know, continuing. I'm just wondering how the continuing thing would work. Right? Oh, but I think you're talking about different images. Different images. Yeah, yeah different images, you know. Uh, you could take details from buildings, you know, anything. Right. That sounds great. Maybe Hudson is the logo. Did it, did it just the yeah, logo? just the word Hudson. Yeah, you know? that sounds great. We use a skunk. But this is hmm? Hudson. <laughs> 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 this is me. That's going back to yeah. the idea. I've been looking at the whole time. Yeah, there it is. Right. Going back to the idea that branding is creating an icon, mm -hmm. like a, 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 a little image that, to, and I, I feel like it should be more than that. It should be more than that. Yeah. And it should be other I agree. than that. And I'm, I really feel like the look, if there is a logo, I think it. Is irrelevant. Like I, I, there could be one. There doesn't have to be one. I think it's more about how are we creating a more of an overall encompassing kind of idea of what Hudson is and how does it become sustainable. Mm -hmm. So you mean like yeah. a marketing plan for Hudson, not not just right. a marketing not a, book, not a logo. Yeah, 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 a plan yeah. like it would include maybe yeah. signage. Yeah. It would include maybe. And maybe it's not about graphics. Maybe yeah. it's about. Something. And graphics can change. I mean, I would, I would like to see us as a community study a community that has been a tourist destination for decades, and just kind of you know, like see how it how they've managed it. And I have a particular one in mind. Which one? Alice. Holland, Michigan, my hometown. I don't want to you know admit that I grew up in the same town as Betsy DeVos, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of it? Holland, Michigan. Holland. And it, you know, it, it, it is still, you know, it was a tourist destination when I was a kid. It's still a tourist destination, and it has evolved over time. It has, you know, mostly all of the same features that Hudson has. It's, <laughs> it's on the water. It has an interesting history. It, you know, for Holland, it's the, you know, the the Dutch who came and tulip time is their, you know, like central celebration that brings everyone there. But it, you know, that's just, that was kind of the big thing for a long time and now it's spread out and there are people who come there all the time and they've done interesting things with their main street. Um, they don't have a lot of big box stores. They used to have a Talbot's and that was about the only chain that was there. So they have, you know, like interesting shops. They've done some interesting things with their main street that encourages walking and all of the parking is off the street and they have free parking. They make a big deal of it. <laughs> but, yeah. but I think, you know, I think rather than, I think we need to study, you know, this kind of long-term success and, and see what the, what the secrets are because, and it's also a very diverse population. There's a huge Mexican population in Holland. So there's, you know, there are a lot of similarities there. I mean, it's not the same diversity that we have, um, but it's... Well, closer to home, there are places like historic Deerfield. Well, we can choose it closer to home. Holland is just one that I happen to know well. <laughs> Well, we can look at a couple, like the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I think that that, this is kind of where I was hoping the conversation would go, is that it's, it's not like yes or no. What Chandler thinks did, it, it isn't horrible. It isn't like, if this happens, this is the end of Hudson. But since we have the opportunity to do something better, I like this idea of exploring and, and, and going back. And I mean, any business, is going to look at what other businesses are doing and they're going to say, what are their best practices? Let's do that. Well, and it would seem like interviewing people, I think, who do come to Hudson is a good idea for what would make your experience better. Um, you know, I don't think you need wayfinding once you're on Warren, but it does seem like I've certainly had people ask me from the train 
down by the train. Where's Warren Street? Well, that's what's so funny about the tours. You can see they were there. They have those placemats that have the map on them. You know, because there is no real good map of Hudson. You know, like one thing yeah. that would be obvious would be to, I, I wanted to make a map when I first started coming to Hudson. I wanted to make a map because it was such an obvious lack. Yeah. And trees on Warren Street. You know, like. I mean, I don't know if that's under the... No, I think this is all part of that. I think that this... Because if, if we go with the premise that, you know, a happy city with people, you know, we could train. We could spend $75,000 and we can train a huge number of people in Hudson to be really friendly when people come. But it's not authentic. Mm -hmm. But if we spend it on things where... If you put trees, and trees are going to make Warren Street even more picturesque. And you put trees on State and Columbia and, you know, Union... And if that's going to make people in Hudson happy, but also make mm -hmm. people coming. Greenport, New York, uh, I think eight years in a row was like the Arbor, mm. Arbor Day city of New York or something. They kept winning because they had this guy who had a passion for planting trees. And I talked to him and I said, I want a cherry tree in front of my house. And he, he gave me one. Mm -hmm. It was great. So I think to, to um, fine tune a little bit what Trixie said, it's, you know, a, a, a tour is a destination. It's a place where people want to live in. So you, you can take out the happiness part because of, cause obviously not everyone's happy, right? Right. But a city that people want to go to is a city that people want to live in. I mean, you think of places like Berlin or something. People like living there, right? Well. Except the old thing about New York, it's a nice place to visit, but you wouldn't right. want to live there. Right. <laughs> well, except, except the people do. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's changed, but yeah. I put this up here. I, I was looking, before I came here, I was looking at examples of destinations. And I was reading, and it was a lot of marketing articles. I didn't agree with them. But they, they were kind of calling out how Paris had done an excellent job because they had done this typography where they were hitting the, the Eiffel Tower. And I put that up there kind of as a contrast because I, I kind of agree with the group that, that we can't just promote Alana. We just can't. Like, what makes Hudson, when, when my partner and I were moving up here, I honestly didn't want to come back to Columbia County. I was like, nope, don't want to do it. And I looked at the Berkshires. We actually put a bid on a house in Great Barrington, and thank God we didn't get it, because that pushed us to Hudson. And when we came into Hudson, we were like, wow, this is so much more refreshing. Especially coming from New York. You know, I lived in Brooklyn for about 25 years, so it's like to have the diversity. Also, Hudson has a sophistication that I think a lot of the other Hudson Valley towns does not have. And I think that's something that we could... We always noticed when we first moved here that, you know, unlike a lot of upstate New York towns, the downtown is buzzing with activity often. Yeah. And it's a radical difference from when we first moved here, like what Catskill looked And you have to also mention where we came from. We came from Colorado. Right. So we looked into, okay, we're, Susan got a job in Albany. We were a little familiar with Albany and, you know, wanted something a little more interesting. So we looked in, and so it was just pressing all the right buttons in terms of the fine arts, because there was the NADA art fair. And you're going, okay, new art dealers fair with Zach Foyer. That's, that's going to be a tip-off. These are little signs that things are, you know, this is a, a cool town. And, and then you come, and then you go to Catskill on the same Thursday, and there, was, there were two people. Now, Catskill has changed yeah. Yeah. since then. Catskill is, is quite appealing, actually. Right. But, but Hudson was like, wow, there's people everywhere on the street. Each day you know? of the week. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of, and, and off-season, or in the middle of the week, a lot of the same businesses that are trying to shoot people out the door so that they can get fresh customers in are begging for customers. Yes. I mean... Yeah, our time, our time mm -hmm. must have been good. Yeah. You know, it was because you're right. It, 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 yeah. But Which still, is also appealing, by the way, to go downtown and not have enormous crowds. It might be for the businesses that are struggling that's, this week. Yeah. And uh -huh. the employees that are working there that are really mm -hmm. struggling. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, you know, that's another tourism issue, how to bring people to the city in the middle of the week instead of just on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. in the winter. Yeah. Which, well, might, which might actually, you might have to get creative on that, because if you think of like millennials, 
I know everybody has their opinions on millennials. I happen to be fond of them. But if you look at millennials, they're working in very different ways. I mean, I remember when I was their age, I had to be able to work on time, and that meant that I had to deal, I had to be at the subway early. You look now, and you've got you know millennials who are like showing up to work at 10, 30, 11. And you're like, wow, that's pretty lazy. Except that then they work till midnight or what have you. So I'm wondering if there's some sort of flexibility. Maybe we tap into like millennials who work the weekend and come up to Hudson on Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Or with the winter thing, I was just thinking, you know, how ski resorts have figured out a way to get people to come in the summer. And like in Aspen, you know, they have the Aspen Institute, you know, where people go there in the summer. And there could be more of that. Um, you know, if there were conferences or something like that during the week, you know, people would come. Right now, there's not so much for people to come to during that. On the ski resort note, I mean, if you could figure out a way to get people off the train and into a yeah. hotel, yeah. and we could take them to a ski resort um, during the week, and they don't have to rent a car, yeah. that would be a great draw for people in the city who wanted to come up and yeah. enjoy skiing without... So there could be an opportunity for entrepreneurs to have some sort of um, shuttle service. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or just let's get really crazy, since it's a brainstorm. I mean, could we take tourism money and operate a bus? I don't know. Like a shuttle. Yeah, if we could just do it. Yeah, don't forget yeah, about the Brooklyn them back bus. From the Brooklyn Somebody's bus. already putting up their yeah, cash to create a bus trip. And if it went to all the hotels. And you're right about yeah. that because the, the Brooklyn bus, if you think about the, um, what's it called, the, the Hampton Jitney. Right. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. Hampton Jitney was just this simple bus, and the Hampton Jitney has gotten so big now. There's, there's an executive level, and there's a regular level, and they're going everywhere. They're going all over, like way out to Montauk, all over the North Fork. Why not? It could be. It could be something. Well, in that Brooklyn bus, I think they were calling it a jitney. Weren't they? I think they are. Yeah. I think it's been referred to that way. I don't know if they're calling it that. Mm -hmm. So there, I mean, there could be ideas. You know, this goes beyond the actual brand of the city, but like there could be opportunities for local businesses to kind of join together in a way of doing um, a promotion. You know, like come to Hudson. If you look at restaurants, they pick their slowest day and they do something. They make right. fried chicken at Abel. Right. Who doesn't love to go to Abel on Wednesday and get their fried chicken? So like, what if Hudson, like, if our businesses join together and we like, okay, let's pick a day and we just say like, man, hump day in Hudson is the best, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Back bar has something going on. There's something down in Front Street. There's, you know. So that takes it.